All righty. Shalom, 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 peace. Welcome to another episode of Don't Shoot the Messenger. This is episode number 154. All praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai. It's your host, your brother Amath. I acquire first name, IQ, it's all the same. Prayerfully, everybody's doing well today, man. For those of us who are um, keeping Day of Atonement today, I pray that your atonement is going well. Uh, that your repentance and reconciliation with our Heavenly Father is going according to plan and you're staying strong and enduring during these times and during this day, right? So nonetheless, the work can continue. Uh, the word of the Lord still has to go forth. And, uh, you know, DSTM and information is still cracking, still cracking, right? So we got to go ahead on and get to some of these articles, man. A lot of things are still heating up in terms of war. It's spanning beyond Russia and Ukraine at this particular point. Uh, North Korea launched uh, some missile tests over Japan, causing them to head for the hills and uh, go and, and a national edict going out telling everyone to take cover. They thought they were under attack. Um, Poland now is asking the U.S. to come bring nukes to them. They want to be armed. They want to be prepared for the day of battle. Uh, we've got Ishmael and the Arabs sliding slow Biden. And cutting oil production, which means what? Higher energy prices, higher gas, uh, more hell on earth, in other words. Meanwhile, they're backdoor handshaking with Russia, strengthening Russia. Even though the mainstream media keeps continually saying Putin's in trouble, he's struggling, he's losing, he's doing all this. Last time I checked, he just annexed four uh, regions out of Ukraine, added them to his um landscape last time that i checked um Zelensky was running to nato for help trying to expedite the application to join nato uh i can't tell that he's hurting last time that i checked russia is over here uh creating and making oil deals with the arabs strengthening its economy through the BRICS uh, agreement with brazil india china and south korea and they're looking to add other nations to that economy so that they can um ex ex uh, communicate themselves from the u.s dollar being the world reserve currency so um i can't really tell that things is all bad right and then another last article i want to touch on is they're talking about how switzerland is dealing with systematic racism and they've got to fix that problem because you know they, they don't like the africans over there and some of which are Israel. So, yeah, even in Switzerland, they don't like you niggas. So don't think that there's some rest haven where they love you. And we're going to show some of that and according to the curses of the Bible, man. So uh, strap in. Let's get ready. Hopefully everybody's solidified and ready to go. Let's go ahead and uh, open up, man. Let me share my screen. Hold on. Something has changed here. What is present screen? Interesting. They changed the wording. Instead of sharing screen, they put present screen. So, you know, who knows what goes on with this app, man. But nonetheless, here we go. Here we go. Uh, I want to look at a little more in depth. First of all, a little more in depth through this article regarding the nuclear capabilities of Russia and what that means towards the world. And overall, final judgment, Armageddon on this earth. Uh, he's made it clear. Putin's made it clear that he's not bluffing. He will use nukes if uh, any of his new annex regions are attacked. He's going to use everything in the shed, every tool in the shed to defend. Mother Russia. Right. So look at this. Putin's nuclear options, the terrifying weapons Russia could use against the Ukraine and the targets they could strike to warn or even attack Kiev and nato so they are openly acknowledging in this article that russia hasn't even started using any real weaponry that they could use they haven't even brought out the big guns let's just put it like that right so they're down there fighting the playing fair they're going along with um international law regarding what they can and can't use right they're playing playing by the rules even though they've got 
uh, outdated and antiquated, um, you know, weaponry tanks and this, that, and the third. The, you know, uh, Ukraine is getting all of the high power stuff from uh, U.S. and Russia. And again, I brought out the point. Well, how are they? How are they automatically able to know how to use these sophisticated systems, unless somebody's there actually using it or fast track training them in real time? In the midst of the war. Does that make sense? I mean, clearly, if somebody's giving you high tech weaponry, the US and NATO's not just dropping it off to Ukraine saying, here, figure it out. We're out of here. There's boots on the ground down there between the US and NATO instructing and showing and training the Ukrainians on how to use these weapons, the javelin missiles. The radar systems, the drones, all that other stuff, showing them how to use it. But at the same time, hey, we're in the midst of war. So shouldn't they be showing them in real time how to use these things? You think they got time to fall back and say, hold on, uh, Russia, we, we got to figure out how to use these things. It's going to take us about three months of training. Stop, stop shooting. Stop invading so that we can figure these things out. No, they're doing it in real time. Meaning what? That NATO and the U.S. guaranteed are out there launching, shooting, tracking, you know, uh, uh, flying the drones, launching the missiles, doing all this stuff. And showing the Ukrainian says, showing them saying, see, this is this is how you do it. Watch. See that here. Press this button, that button, blah, 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 blah. Look at these coordinates. This is how we do it. Hold on. Just stand back. I'll show you how to do it again. Boom. You understand? That's how this thing is working. That's how we know that this is a proxy war uh between russia nato and its allies and ukraine um so potentially and we may as well say world war three has already began i've said this before i'm standing on that it just hasn't escalated to the point to where we see that russia has at its disposal terrifying weapons that they could use to obliterate ukraine they could use it to obliterate you uh, america any of the NATO allies, but they're holding tight. They're not use, utilizing those things yet. They haven't even brought out the big guns. Let's just say that. We, 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 we made that point. Let's look at this. Russia's army is facing defeat, and Putin's gas hostage diplomacy is failing. Listen to this, and we're going to see something after this. NATO has warned that Putin is planning to detonate a nuke on Ukraine's border. Ultranationalists and TV propagandists urge the leader to break the taboo. Russia has 6,000 nuclear weapons, the largest stockpile in the world. So if they just wanted to go ahead on and unleash hell on earth, they absolutely could. If they want to go ahead and break out the Satan II missile, the intercontinental ballistic missile that can make it over here to the U.S. in 15 minutes, they could do that. And they've got plenty to spare. They've got the largest stockpile of nukes in the world beyond America. America's number two. Let's look at this. Kremlin watches have a long place meaning of the famous story Vladimir Putin once told of the encounter with a rat when he was a child in the Soviet Union, uh, Soviet ruins of Leningrad. Let's forget all of this. I want to get right to the point. Uh, we made this point last Friday about how the United States created a precedence by dropping the bombs, dropping atomic bombs in World War II. So, you know, just like I said in the live that got deleted by YouTube, by the way, I'm fighting that. Most high willing, say the prayers um, and, and pray for the deliverance of, of uh, that information in that video. And it's really just praying for a victory over our enemies. You understand? Because they're trying to shut down any as aspect of truth. They're constantly trying to, you know, uh, poke and prod to what we do here, messengers of the covenant. So, you know, just send up the prayers, man. Any victory is, is is worthwhile celebrating. So send up the prayers, man. Hopefully that appeal goes through and they let that video sign because they said that I played some music um, from from a TV show or something. There was no music that was played, man. And I, I utilized the Fair Use Act when I um, uh, initiated the video. So, you know, let's see what happens. But anyway, in that same video, and I mentioned it on Monday, that Putin called uh, hypocrisy on America and the world 
You know, they're calling him a madman. They're doing all this. And this is not some pro-Russia talk, man. They're both devils. Let's get it clear. Putin is a Putin is a damn demon and a devil. So is slow Biden and the rest of the NATO leaders. They're all part of the great whore. I mean, they're, they're all part of the um the the beast system. You know, being led and ridden by the great whore, which is America. There's no lesser two evils with these. It's all evil. But the fact of the matter is, is so that we can dissect what's going on and kind of understand how and why the Most High is doing these things and utilizing Russia as a tool. You got to call a spade a spade and truth is truth. So when he acknowledged and said that America is basically being hypocrites, man, they set the precedence as far as bombing and dropping nukes. Nobody's um, ridiculing and talking about how America is so murderous and how America is so devious and evil and wicked. You know, that, that's kind of a thing of the past. Look, the, the Japanese have completely forgiven. They received their reparations and they back brown nose and they're laying up underneath, uh, underneath of the armpits of this great horror here in America. All is forgiven, right? Even though they were over here in uh, concentration camps, what they call internment camps, re-education camps, just for being Japanese, they got thrown in camps and they were not released until the end of the war and they were sent off for $25 in a train ticket. And how easily they forget they love America again, right? But see, Putin called their bluff and said, look, I haven't even done this. America's the one that did it. And the whole world's seen it. And we covered the scripture in Revelation 13 regarding him, um, this beast that came up that uh, do, did uh, great wonders and made fire come down from heaven in the sight of all men. That was America, man. That's that beast. So let's look at this. It said Russia's massive stockpile of nuclear weapons is the last credible threat Putin has in his struggle with the West. So they're saying that this is the last, last this effort. They've lost. All right, they lost everything else. They losing ground. Uh, they, they losing generals. Hundreds of thousands of their men are dying. You know, all the new recruits that he just called up in the reserves, the 300,000, they're all leaving and escaping and running off. And, you know, nobody wants to fight. It's pretty much over. Leave it to. Western media in the in the storyline, right? Even though we just got through reading and, and talking about how Russia's got and, and China has uh, our, uh, warships off the coast of Alaska. I mean, again, if, if I'm losing a war like that, I'm calling all hands on deck. Everybody come back. How, how's he got time to be? concentrating on what's going on over here in america in the meanwhile he's fighting a losing war in ukraine i mean none of this makes sense but they want to and want me to believe the headlines and the stories that's going on right so they're saying and it, it, the last credible effort that he could do the last thing they could do to get out of this is to go nuclear Right. So, hey, if it, if it is true and his back is against the wall, then you damn right. This would be a, a real threat because it all goes along with the biblical narrative. So figure it out. Right. Let's look at uh, this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's look at this. Isaiah 46. And we know that the scriptures is always cyclical. And it, it, and it can be utilized. In a dual prophecy, you know, some will say that this this particular scripture was talking about Cyrus, but at the same time, the Most High can acknowledge that there's going to be many kings of the east or men of the east, ravenous men of the east, that's going to come out and establish final judgment like this, right? So, let me look at this in uh, Jeremiah 46 and. Uh, Let's look at verse. Uh, we're going to. Let me see. You know, before we go there, just to show that point, though, regarding. Just before we go there. About things being double, right? Job 11. 
verse six, it says, and that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. So we're seeing that wisdom can come in doubles. It can be shown double sided. It can be do in, uh, shown in duality. OK, just like the most I said in, in um, uh, the book of Hebrews. Uh, what is it? Hebrews. Hebrews four. Hebrews four and twelve. It says the word of the most high is quick and sharper than any two edged sword. A two edged sword can cut and it can heal. Right. A two edged sword. How you say that? You, because look. Let's say. Um, you're cutting to kill. But you can also cut to heal because what do you do when you need to take a cancer out? What do you need to do when you got to take a particular disease out or ailment or you got to heal an organ or a wound or something like that? You have to cut in order to bring that healing. So the most high shows that the sword or the or which is known as the Bible is a two edged sword that it can cut both ways, that it moves in duality. And we also see here that wisdom and secrets of wisdom come in double. Right. So twofold. Know, therefore, that the most high exact of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. So let's go back over here to Isaiah 46. And let's start at verse eight. It says, remember this and show yourselves, men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am the most high and there is none else. I am the most high and there is none like me. So the most high is acknowledged. He said, listen remember the things of old history is important we have to acknowledge and remember history you have to delve into your background our background world history things of that nature man you brothers that are out there being studious learning of the word of the most high you have to up your game in regards to scholarship it can't just be about oh the, the white man's the devil we're going to kill him and and um you know uh 1619 and uh 1492 with the slave slavery and the the um impact of columbia we got to delve in a little bit more a little bit more to continually understand all of the things of old our history going into the old testament learning more about the histories of the kings the prophets the judges you know learning more about uh the prophecies and the things that were happening in ezra nehemiah habeka you know nahum you know learning about those things of old let alone when you're learning about your enemy as well, you got to learn about his history. So learning a little bit about what's going on with the, the, the in, internal strikes between Ukraine and Russia so that you can understand prophetically why and what's happening right now. You know, you got to learn about the things of old. What do they say? If you don't know about your past, you're destined to repeat it. I for sure am sick of this captivity and this bondage, man. I'm not trying to repeat this again. So we got to get it right now, right? So what the most I say, verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. So the most I said that he declared the end from the beginning. The story is already written. The history is already understood. The prophecies are already laid down. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand so the things that prophetically have not happened yet is said that the things that were spoken of during the ancient times if they aren't not done yet they still will stand and he's going to do all his pleasure so when we're reading about the overthrow when we're reading about like let's say in jeremiah 23 where it said no longer we're going to be saying that the children of israel were delivered out of the um out of the um out of egypt but out of the north country that's a future prophecy to hell with what the Christians are talking about. Every all the prophecies in the Old Testament have been fulfilled already. When did that happen? When did the the, the reunification of the northern and the uh, the southern kingdom, Jeremiah fifteen thirty three? When did that happen again? That we were reunited and, and held in bondage. So the Most High is acknowledging. He said that everything that he did of the ancient times, if they're not done yet, they will be done. His counsel is going to stand. So when we're seeing the thing, let's say if for, for one who would understand and say, oh, this was Cyrus. He's the ravenous bird from the east. Well, the Lord said that this isn't the only time. He mentions in Revelation 16 about the kings of the east. We're going to go there next. Matter of fact. That his counsel is going to stand. He's going to do all his pleasure. Let's read verse 11. He says, calling a ravenous bird from the east. 
I was just looking at the definition of ravenous. Look at this. It says extremely hungry are characterized by extreme hunger or voracious. So here they are making it sound as if Putin is that desperate. That he's hungry. You know, that he's going to go out and do some terrible things. Predatory, ferocious and pre, uh, predation, eager for gratification, extremely desirous. Does he want to win? Does he want to annex uh, the rest of the um, Ukrainian country back to himself? Does he want immediate gratification and say, look, I was right. I called out the U.S. on that BS. I stood up to NATO. I did everything that I was supposed to do to defend country and honor. That's ravenous. And how far is he willing to go? How far is he willing to go? What are they saying? That he's willing to go all the way. Put nukes on the uh, on the table, right? Um, look at this one down here. Greedy, insatiable, covetous. You know, you leave it to you leave it to Ukraine in the in the Western narrative. He's being greedy and, and, and insatiable. He can't get enough. Ukraine wants to be annexed and left alone. They want to stay away and you know rule in their own corruption. And he's saying, "No, come on back." Oh, he's being covered. It's, well, that's ravenous. And the Lord said he's going to call a ravenous bird from where? From the east. When you talk about Eurasia, that's the east. Russia, China, North Korea, Japan. You know, all of the lands of Eurasia, that would be considered the east. Let's look at that real quick. See, look at this. This is a map of Eurasia. Oh, come on now. You can see it right here. This thing is taking forever. I don't even need that one. There we go. See that up here? Eurasia. And who's included in that? Here's Japan over here. Hello. Here's North Korea down here, South Korea. Look who else is part of that. China, Russia, Kazakhstan, Iran, Pakistan, India. This is all Sweden. This is all called Eurasia. Okay. These are the East. This is the this is what's considered the Eastern seaboard america nato europe that's considered the west the uk all right so let's read this again calling the ravenous bird from the east that the man the man that executed my counsel from a far country yea i have spoken it i will also bring it to pass i proposed it i will also do it so we've gone over ezekiel 38 a number of times how the most High is going to put hooks in the jaws of Gog and Magog going to draw them and pull them into war. Okay, so here he says, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. That's Ezekiel 38, right? Hearken unto me, ye stout hearted that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness, it shall not be far off. My salvation shall not tarry. I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. This is all part of bringing the glory of Israel back into perspectives of salvation man this is all for us so although you know two-thirds of our people are going to be destroyed many of the heathen are going to uh, vast amounts of the heathen are going to be destroyed and brought into slavery and bondage you know countries america is going to be completely a heap of ash and uninhabitable is it all for the salvation of zion the glory of the most high right so let's look at this again uh, let's look down here. It says, what's his options? Russia maintains 6,000 nukes, of which 2,000 are, quote, tactical that can be deployed on the battlefield via ships, planes, or short-range missiles. Pictured as an intercontinental ballistic missile being launched from an airfield during military drills. Here's a sub. The Vladimir 
Monomac. Operational since 2015 is a Russian ballistic mi missile submarine armed with nuclear capable M Balava missiles. So they've got stationary missiles, tactical. They got the ones that can go in water armed with the um, subs. But look at this. The Russian nuclear stockpile, the largest in the world, consists of, quote, tactical low yield bombs and strategic weapons that can annihilate entire cities and population centers. Did, did you hear that? That's what they talk about saying, oh, well, he may use a tactical nuke. A tactical nuke, they said, is a lower yielding bomb. But what's lower? The low level bombs that they're talking about will decimate and annihilate all a whole city and population centers. That's like saying a tactical bomb will just destroy all of Chicago. All of uh, Brooklyn and, 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 and accompanying uh, nearby boroughs. L.A. Right. We're talking about populations that hold millions of people. And they said that's low level. They're saying that's what he's willing to use right now. That's what he could use right now. Let's look at this. Russian tactical nukes with a yield of between 10 and 100 kilotons are designed for use on the battlefield and contested territory. By way of example, the atomic bomb dropped in Hiroshima in 1945 was approximately 18 kilotons. Can we read that again? Russian tactical nukes with a yield of between 10 and 100 kilotons are designed for use on the battlefield and contested territory. By way of example, the atomic bomb that dropped in Hiroshima in 1945, the one that America did. Remember that one. It was only 18 kilotons. And that was said to have killed anywhere between 129,000 and 200 and uh, what did it say? 220 almost 225,000 people at 18 kilotons. Russia's messing with anywhere from 10 to 100. Do the math on the damage and the, and the lives that's going to be lost. This is why <laughs> this is why a day of atonement is important. This is why reconciling with the Most High Yahweh is important because there is no way out of this unless you are a child of the Most High God, may, name, namely an Israelite, following after the commandments of the Most High through the grace and mercy of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. There's no, there's no getting around this thing. The weaponry and the, and, the, and, the, and the type of toys that these cats are playing with is going to destroy the world as we know it. Millions are going to be dead. The use of strategic nuclear weapons is the ultimate deterrent. If ever used, retaliation will be inevitable and the world will be looking at nuclear Armageddon. Putin is unlikely to launch these. <laughs> uh, let's look at this. Let me, let me drop down a little bit more. So here they are looking at the capabilities of nuclear warheads. Russia's in the red. USA is in the blue. Clearly we see Russia has outpaced america with uh their, their nuclear arms and warheads russia has a slightly larger nuclear uh, weapon stockpile than the usa and it is putin's last card now that his army has been proven ineffective and europe is standing firm against his gas supply blackmail they're standing firm huh okay okay uh lord willing Friday Night Lights, we'll see if they're standing firm. They're talking about numerous countries in Europe are preparing for a cold winter, high energy prices. They don't know what to do. They're expecting to get jacked up. But they're talking about they're standing firm against gas supply and blackmail, especially now that uh, the Arabs have cut off oil uh, production. We'll get to that in a minute. Tactical nuclear weapon yield comparison. U.S. BR-1, BR-61, three bomb, and the Russian SX-26. Look at what we're seeing here. This is the 18 ton kilowatt kilobomb, right? This is the type of area that it would it would uh it would destroy. This right here shows the fireball radius is the yellow. 
The heavy blast damage radius is in the red. Moderate damage radius in the thermal radiation radius. Okay, so they're showing how far radiation will spread by these bigger yellow circles, right? And they're showing the heavy blast radius, how far it spreads out. Here's the, the, the mile radiuses that they're looking at. This was Hiroshima, right? This is the 100 kiloton bomb that Russia has. Here's a bomb that America could utilize. But you see how big the damages are and what could be done. Hold on, those are other things. I don't need those. Let me back up. Slacky. All right, so let's get back down over here. Uh, I wanted to see some. I thought they had. They were talking about. I don't know if it was this one or if it was another article I was looking at, but they was basically talking about how the damage would go down. They were talking about how far out a mile radius, if you wasn't initially obliterated by the, the, the explosion itself, then certain mileages away, I, I forgot how far away it was, the next thing would be radiation exposure, and that would actually kill you within like a week or two weeks. And if you was far enough away the 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 best that you would get or the worst that you would get is third degree burns now third degree burns is still pretty lethal let's <clears throat> let's see i want to see if i can find that this this is what it looked like and this is for people who are miles away multi miles away for those that are squeamish, turn your head. But if you want to see what it looks like, you see, now I got to find that because. Okay, let's let's look at this one real quick. Now, this one says, according to some estimates, a 10 kiloton nuclear bomb that explodes over the White House would kill 130,230 people and injure about 173,000 more. So, look at the mileage, right? This is the White House here, ground zero. Casualty rate near 100%. All buildings and structures will be destroyed. All this is gone. Three miles away, massive dose of radiation with casualty rate between 50 and 90 percent. So if you're within three miles from the detonating center, you're still 50 to 90 percent going to die. From radiation exposure, four and a half miles away, most residential buildings will still collapse. Why? Because they got shock waves that's going to get hit. It's almost like a massive earthquake that gets hit from a nuke. Residential build buildings are going to collapse. Nearly everyone injured, many casualties. So that's just from a 10 kilowatt. Remember, Hiroshima was 18. This is this is this is the this is the smallest one that they have at their disposal. 130,000 put to death. 173,000 are either uh, will be injured dealing with that nuke. A small one, right? Uh, let me see. Hold on. That's 10. There was another one, man, I said about. I'm pretty sure the ones that was like four, four miles out that uh, I'm trying to remember where I seen it. 
Uh, see, look at this one. And I just want to just kind of put it into perspective to see what, what we're talking about here. Uh, you see up here that the zone says light damage is like the, the, the mustard yellow, moderate damage is the orange, uh, the burgundy red or the dark, dark burgundy is a no-go zone. So light damage, windows mostly broken, injuries requiring self or outpatient care. So they're saying that's about a, three miles out. Significant building damage and rubble down utility poles, overturned automobiles, fires, many serious injuries. Greatest life-saving opportunities would be within a mile range. No-go zone, building destroyed, radiation prevents entry into the area. Life-saving is not likely anywhere between half a mile and, and closer. So some of these are given different estimates. But there was one man that said that if you was within like three to five miles, the radiation. Uh, hold on. They talking about how to survive an attack. Yeah, right. It's like, yeah, I don't want to spend the time on it. Sometimes I just get interested, man. I just get to looking around. <laughs> Hopefully, y'all riding with me. Uh, see, look at this uh here's what would happen if a missile if the missile north korea tested in 2017 detonated above lower manhattan so here they got their companies cities other the, the boroughs the bronx queens brooklyn across the water is new jersey manhattan right so the epicenter is the fireball radius is 0.28 miles this would be the size of the fireball the fallout would deepen on whether it detonated on the ground which would make fatalities even much worse Almost everyone in this area will be killed immediately. That's right in here. Expanding out into the green. Even two miles out, you're still in danger of flying debris. If caught outside, lie down, take cover, and don't look at the fireball. It can blind you. That's two miles out. You're still going to get hit. Radiation mile uh, radius, 0.62 miles. Things get grim just outside of fireballs impact where there's between 50 and 90 percent chance of mortality just from acute effects. Death could take hours or even weeks. Thermal radiation, uh, radiation, 3.3 miles. Your biggest worry at this distance would be third degree burns. This is the one. Yeah. Third degree burns, which, which could cause scarring at best and amputation in the worst cases. 3.3 miles away out here. You still, still going to get hit with third degree burns. And y'all seen what the third degree burns look like. That's how crucial it is. So let's look back at this real quick and then uh, we'll move on. So we see the type of the wet weaponry that they're playing with now. The devastation that it's going to cause. And, uh, they're saying that this is Putin's last ditch effort, man, to hold on to uh, everything that he has. That he's playing with nukes. All right. Well, let's look how, how, how is Poland taking this. Poland says this is a serious threat. Poland asked the U.S. to host nuclear weapons amid growing fears of Putin's threats. They're begging. Why zaddy? Here they go to the great whore. Asking for help so poland's asking the u.s to host nuclear weapons amid growing fears of putin's threat well where is poland in compared to russia uh see how close that is here's poland right here russia's right there matter of fact all that you see right here <laughs> is russia and here they are saying we need nukes close by we want nukes here you don't think that that's going to be a threat to to russia hmm that you can have nukes this close
Poland asked U.S. to host nuclear weapons amid growing fears of Putin's threats. Request is widely seen as symbolic as moving nuclear warheads closer to uh, Russia would make them less militarily useful. They're always trying to downplay some things. Poland says it has asked the U.S. to have nuclear weapons based on its territory. Uh, hello? They want to get armed up. Amid growing fears that Vladimir Putin could resort to using nuclear arms in Ukraine to stave off a route of his invading army. The request from the Polish president, Andrzej Duda, is widely seen as symbolic as moving nuclear warheads closer to Russia would make them more vulnerable and less militarily useful, according to experts. Furthermore, the White House has said it had not received such a request. Of course not. We're not aware of this issue being raised and would refer to your government uh, and would refer you to the government of Poland, a U.S. official said, that nobody else is hearing about it. But meanwhile, you've got uh, the London Guardian reporting on it. You, uh, are you saying the Guardian just made this up? <laughs> Duda's announcement appears to be the latest example of nuclear signaling as the U.S. and its allies seek to deter Putin from the first nuclear use in battle since 1945 while preparing potential responses. If deterrence fails, that would have maximum punitive impact while containing the risk of escalation to all-out nuclear war. So, look who's asking for nukes. Look who's asking for backup. And, of course, the U.S. is going to say publicly, hey, that's between us, man. Don't put that out there publicly. What's wrong with you? We was just going to slide them things over there and had you set. They're trying to militarily line up a defense against russia you move nukes closer to russia man it's on but here we go here we go look at this north korea conducts its longest range missile test yet over japan why are they saying why are they getting stirred up why are they getting stirred up so we're just gonna go there let's go there uh 16 and i want to go to verse yeah here we go 12. see revelation 16 and 12. it says and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river euphrates and the waters thereof was dried up so we do see and we do know that This prophecy, this judgment, this plague has been released. The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up. So this sign, this wonder, this prophecy, this judgment has happened. The drying up of the Euphrates, as we see here. Here's one example, right? This is once a river that was known for flowing, imports, exports. Uh, let me see if I can find a bit, another one. I mean, you can see it all over. You're the damn Arabs talking about the signs of the Mahdi. Get out of here. <laughs> It's constantly still in our prophecies, constantly still in the judgments of the Lord, man. But you can see here, the Euphrates is drying up all over the place. All of these images. Look at this. The Euphrates is almost completely drying up. So that prophecy is, is coming to pass, right? But what goes along with that? And the water there was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So when we see this happening... Now you see the kings of the east starting to prepare themselves, preparing themselves for what? For warfare. World War Three. They're getting ready to get themselves in alignment. This is why all the nuke talk has been happening, because here we see the king, the ravenous uh, bird from the east. He's lining himself up in desperation to go out there and ravage the earth and against his enemies. We see the kings of the east. Here we are, North Korea, Japan, China, all of them lining themselves up, ready. So this is why you see all of these multiple tests being done by North Korea. North Korea trying to align themselves and create a partnership with Russia. Because the kings of the East now are preparing. 
North Korea conducts the longest range missile test yet over Japan. Nuclear armed North Korea test fired a ballistic missile farther than ever before on Tuesday, sending it soaring over Japan for the first time in five years and prompting warning for residents there to take cover. So here they are. See, you see the scattering. <laughs> Look at her in Korea. Imagine that. That's the diaspora. That's Israel, man. We're all over the place. U.S. President Slow Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida spoke by phone and condemned the test in the strongest terms, calling it a danger to the Japanese people. And Biden reinforced the ironclad U.S. commitment to the defense of Japan. The White House has said, see, that there, there goes Slow Biden in America, man, stretching itself thin. It's got too many Johns. The great whore got too many Johns out there, too many tricks that they got to look out for, man, and protect their interests and protect their money. Taiwan is crying over here. Ukraine is crying over here. Now you got Japan crying over here. The U.S. now is spreading itself so thin, man, it is going to be opening itself up for attack. Ain't going to get drug into one of these conflicts of war, which is going to spark everybody. Because America is tied with NATO, leading NATO. So if America gets to it, NATO's got to get to it. You understand? This, all thing is, this, this, this is how the House of Cards is going to collapse. So slow Biden got to come out and say, hey, hey, that, that's my hoe over there, man. Leave her alone. Calm down, Kim Jong-un. The United States asked the U.N. Security Council to meet on North Korea on uh, Wednesday, but diplomats said China and Russia are opposed to a public discussion by the 15 member body. So look who's getting North Korea's back. They said we ain't having no council. It is what it is. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned the launch as a, quote, reckless act and a violation of Security Council resolutions. Sanctions have been imposed on North Korea's weapons program. U.N. spokesman uh, Steph Stefani Dujeric said it was a serious concern that Pyongyang had again disregarded international flight and maritime safety. So what does that tell you? If they already have sanctions on a weapons program and they still launching they still testing they still building they're still creating uh relations with china and russia the sanctions ain't working they're in complete defiance and they don't give a damn they're saying do something about it they're calling the bluffs of nato and america and saying we're not stopping we're going to keep doing what we're doing and we just sent a test test missile over japan letting them know that we can hit you if we want to Remember, their beef goes all the way back to ancient times. I covered part of that with um, the um, understanding of who is Moab and, and, and um, Ammon and the strife between the Japanese and, the, and the, uh, the, the Koreans and the Chinese. Sibling rivalry. You understand? So, you know, this is where we at with it. They're in defiance. Launching missiles. They told the Japanese said, man, take cover. See this? Japanese government urges residents to take cover after North Korea fires a missile over Japan. They thought they was about to get hit. The missile was fired at 7.22 a.m. local time Tuesday and flew over Japan. 22 minutes later, it landed in the Pacific Ocean. Japan's chief cabinet secretary, Hirokazu Masuno, said to the New York Times in a news briefing per multiple outlets, Masuno said North Korea's series of actions, including its repeated ballistic missile launches, threatens the peace and security of Japan, the region and the inter international community and poses a serious challenge to, to the entire international community, including Japan. Well, what are they going to do about it? Sanctions ain't working. They just got to reject in the council. What, what, and, and China and, and Russia standing behind them saying, what, what, what are they going to do? We're not talking. Keep doing what you're doing and let's see what they want to do about it. Somebody's going to end up flinching. Somebody's going to have to take action. Japan goes crying back to, 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 to the great horse saying help. And what's slow Biden do? Get on the phone. We're going to condemn these attacks. And uh, I wait. This is a, this is a, a, a egregious of what they did. And Japan saying, okay, well, what, what are we going to do? We're going to take action. We're going to try to talk to them. You already had sanctions. You already tried all this stuff. It ain't working. So what's the what's the next thing I need to do? You and I know. 
but they don't want to say it. Okay. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida later said the missile launches were, quote, barbaric. <laughs> On Tuesday morning, local time, the prime minister issued an emergency alert telling citizens North Korea has launched a suspected ballistic missile. More updates to follow. So wartime war drums are beating like crazy. Japan didn't know if it was real, if it wasn't, you know. But they see the things is flying. Let's look at this. And look, look, look what South Korea tried to do in retaliation to show their, their strength <laughs> with, with, with slow Biden. South Korea missile drill with the U.S. malfunctions after successful North Korea launch. So here they are. South Korea is trying to show North Korea, don't try us. We got we got uh, missiles, too, that they got from the U.S. And what happened? <laughs> it malfunctioned. They messed around and blew up their own damn buildings, man. South Korea, a malfunctioning South Korean ballistic missile blew up as it plowed into the ground Wednesday during a live fire drill with the United States. That was a reprisal for North Korea's successful launch a day earlier of a weapon that flew over Japan and has the range to strike the U.S. territory of Guam. So. Didn't we just get through hearing that Japanese officials said that these missile launches are barbaric. So but when South Korea and U.S. do it, no, nobody says nothing. It's not barbaric. It's not 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 um, breaking international law. There's no problems. See how they put the spin on it? They can do it, but other people, other nations, they can't. And they tried it and they failed. The explosion of a subsequent fire panic and confused residents of the coastal city of Gang Nguyen, who were already uneasy over the increasingly provocative weapon tests by rival North Korea. Their concern that it could be a North Korean attack only grew as the military and the government officials provided no explanation about, <laughs> about the explosion for hours. Did you? <laughs> this is too funny. Explosion goes off in South Korea. People is panicking, thinking that North Korea is launched an attack. And the South Korean officials in the U.S. were quiet because they didn't want to explain the embarrassment. Oh, oh, that was us. That was us. Everybody calm down. Don't worry. Everything's fine. And the people's going to be like, what do you mean that was us? You you, you almost blew up the part of the country. Yeah, yeah, don't don't worry. We're, 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 everything's under control. <laughs> These damn gooks, but it's, it's unbelievable. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said no injuries have been reported from the explosion, which involved a short-range Humu-2 missile that crashed inside the Air Force Base in the outskirts of the city it said the crash didn't affect any civilian facilities isn't that nice but here they are they're trying to match weapon for weapon and uh they failed at that thank the u.s for uh helping them out let's look at this real quick opec plus to cut oil production by two million barrels per day to shore up prices defying u.s pressure so opec is the um uh the oil company owned by the arabs if you remember a couple months back slow biden went over there to go meet with him to ask him to pump out more oil he gave he gave the little arab cat um the prince or the, the king over there gave him a fist bump and ishmael was sitting in that meeting like man i wish this dude would get the hell up out of here man and then a couple weeks after, well uh, days later slow biden tested positive for the vid y'all remember that so this is this is uh gonna affect not only the primaries because slow biden failed to uh to make this oil deal happen so again he's got to go back with his tail tucked and look his constituents in the face and say sorry guys i failed is that going to boost the confidence of voters next month probably not the way the gas is looking right now is unbelievable. It's higher than it was back in the summer and months ago when we was complaining. At least here in California, man. I was in just, just in watch last night. Watch yesterday. Premium is seven over seven dollars. Regular unleaded is six plus. Are you talking about one of the most deprived areas in LA County? And you're telling these people. Our people over there, 
that you're gonna have to come up with six fifteen per gallon for the cheapest gas available in these areas. And now they're talking about oil production is gonna even go come slower. So you're not getting more oil from the Arabs. You definitely not getting no more oil from Russia. You already, you know, spent out your reserves because we we read the document that said that slow Biden made the deal from April to October. They were going to be uh, letting out the, the um, dipping into the oil reserves, much of which went to Europe. Us over here benefited up, uh, benefited from the lower gas prices for about three weeks or a month. Actually, I think they said it went about seven weeks. It was dropping. So let's give or take, man, about a month and a half. We experienced low low gas prices. And now it's back with a vengeance. So strap up, brothers and sisters, man. It's only going to get worse. It's going to get worse because the oil and the energy prices now are going to go up because Ishmael ain't messing with slow Biden. And they said we ain't producing no more oil. Two million barrels a day is out all countries that's dependent upon opec oil is going to be jacked up let's look let me look, let me let's look and see real quick let's look and see That ain't what I want. Uh, I don't have time to go through all of this, but nonetheless, OPEC Plus, man, they pretty much dictate the oil production and establishing the pricings for price per barrel so now that the production is going down cost is going to go up because of the scarcity just imagine all right just imagine there's a lot you got to go into and reading and breaking this down to kind of understand where we're headed with the oil production and how that's going to impact us but it's not going to be good it's already not good uh let's look at this last article you don't say you don't say switzerland has systematic racism issues u.n experts say really now hold on Do you, do you see these headlines? Switzerland, one of only 10 truly peaceful countries. Switzerland makes top 10 most peaceful countries. The most peaceful countries in the world. <laughs> Switzerland is the fourth most peaceful country in the world and has some of Europe's most open gun laws. So here we are talking about one of the most peaceful countries. Look at look at the landscape. Look at the plush landscape. Look at all of the waters and the, the greenery and the nice trains and the buildings. And this is one of the most peaceful countries in the world. But meanwhile, they got systematic racism issues. Well, tell us something that we don't know, man. You're not welcome anywhere, Negroes. Even the most peaceful places on earth say, we don't like you niggas. You see how, how, how hypocritical that is, man? The, here they are, trying to let it be known. Uh, look at this. Hold on, where's the one that, that I want? Uh, I think I passed it up. 
Bob we're in proverb. Where is it at? Verse 37. Deuteronomy 28, 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Everywhere you go, there's a derogatory term for black and Native American and Hispanic. Doesn't matter where you go. Even the most peacefulest nations, countries in the world, make war with you. They don't even want you over there. And they're supposed to be all about peace. Everybody come along, get along. Look at this. Deuteronomy 28, 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city and cursed shalt thou be in the field. The field being the world, curse being in the cities, everywhere you go that there's a ghetto, an inner city, a barrio, shanty towns, a favela, everywhere you go, you're going to find the children of Israel that even in the most peacefulest countries, the systematic racism lined up to get our people, man. Uh, Psalm 55. Psalm 55, look at this. Psalm 55 and 20. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. That's a so-called white man. Look at it. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they are drawn swords. They come in peace. They're acting as if everything is solid. We're signing peace treaties. As the Native Americans, over 300 peace treaties, broke all of them. You come to make peace, he comes to bring war and slaughter. So here you are in Switzerland talking about they're one of the top four, top five, top ten peaceful countries in the world, and they still have war with the children of Israel, man. They still don't like you black folks, man. How about that? Still don't believe that you're Israelite? Look at this. Switzerland has systematic racism issues. UN experts warn. Mind you, it said, oh, ex experts say, excuse me, I said warn. Switzerland has a serious systematic problem with racism, a serious, serious systematic problem with racism against who? People of African descent. Like I said, depending on where they came from, usually would determine or quite possibly would determine if they were Israel or not. More than likely, there's a vast majority of these so-called Africans that are actually being discriminated against who are Israelites. According to a report presented to the U.N. Human Rights Council on Monday, giving a broad range of examples from police brutality to a children's game, the U.N. appointed working group noted positive measures taken by Switzerland, but still voiced concerns about the prevalence of racial discrimination and highlighted several incidents following a visit to the country this year. The ubiquity and impunity of this misconduct indicates a serious systematic problem exists, it said. Yeah, tell us something we don't know, man. Switzerland's ambassador to the U.N. in Geneva broadly accepted the findings and comments to the council, although questioned the experts use of limited number of examples to draw wider conclusions. Oh, it's not happening everywhere. Don't don't say all of Switzerland. You know, isn't that always a white excuse? It wasn't me. Yeah, it was my ancestors. I wasn't there. Oh, you're using a small little case study. Yeah, we know that that goes on over there. But over here, they're welcomed. We love you guys. Yeah, right. Landlocked Switzerland has was never a colonial power, but its banks, traders, and municipalities invested heavily and benefited from the transatlantic triangular slave trade, the report said. This is how you know they're Israel. See? Do you notice? The banks, traders, and municipalities invested heavily and benefited from the transatlantic triangular trade the report said talking about what deuteronomy 28 68 triangular slave trade switzerland made money the swiss banks is out there still existing because of the slave trade it noted efforts to raise public awareness about aspects of swiss history such as a petition and debate around the removal of a, of the statue of a banker whose fortune relied on exploitation of enslaved Africans in the canton of Nuchel. However, others remain valorized, such as Lois Agassiz, an advocate of scientific racism who has an alpine peak named after him. Swiss playground games persist of who is afraid of the black man, which have a racial, racially discriminatory effect, the experts say. So again, by word in a proverb, black is a derogatory term. 
We just read that. We just read that curse. Do you understand? So, you know, the article goes on, man. The saga in the, in the history of the children of Israel dealing with these curses worldwide continues. Even the most peacefulest countries don't like you. Don't like you. See? There you have it. All praise, honor, glory to the Most High, Why Yahweh Shah. Man, this concludes episode 154 of Don't Shoot the Messenger. I pray that everybody is, uh, you know, continuing on in your fast day. If you're concluded, depending on where you're at, uh, I pray that all, all, all be fulfilled and your prayers are answered and your supplications are heard and carried by the holy angels. And, uh, you know, other than that, man, if you haven't, make sure that you wipe your feet. Before you go out, man, I be, I be, I be seeing y'all. Some of y'all come in, man. You don't hit the like button. You don't show no, 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 no respect, no honor. You just come on in. You eat and leave. Come on, man. Have some class. Have some dignity. All right. Hit the like button on your way out, brothers and sisters, man. Wipe them feet, man. Lord willing, I'll be back uh, for some more Friday night lights, man. For some more Friday night lights. All right. Uh, other than that, y'all be well. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Shalom.